Welcome to Virtue's Brand of Wrestling on BigVito.com and the Big Vito brand. I am Virtue here with this week's edition. I believe this is, if I'm keeping track myself, number 16 uh, since after WrestleMania this year that I've been doing these um, for the most part weekly. Now we're on a routine for BigVito.com. There's a couple topics I want to talk about today. One's not wrestling, and one is. So normally I do my movie of the week last. I'm going to start off with my movie of the week. And before I show this, I want to go to the DC um, comic franchise. So as we know, basically in the last decade, uh, a little bit over the last decade, we had the Batman Begins trilogy by, uh, I believe, Nolan... Uh, was the director for those. <laughs> Everybody remembers that trilogy with the Heath Ledger Joker performance. Um, you had Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. I actually like those movies in that order. What? You didn't? Virtue, you didn't like The Dark Knight first? Let me tell you why. First of all, Christian Bale did an excellent job as Bruce Wayne. I will go on the record and say uh, for... Theatrical purposes, he was the best Bruce Wayne out of all of them. I think Michael Keaton's Batman, Batman, was the best Batman. And again, I grew up 1980 when I was born, in 89, 92, when those first two Tim Burton-directed Batmans were new. That's what I remember. So Keaton's my favorite Batman, I will say, on the record, he's the best Batman on the motion picture. And then, of course... Christian Bale, to me, is the best Bruce Wayne. And maybe it has a little bit to do with American Psycho. I believe that was the name of the movie. The Christian Bale really kind of brought a little bit of craziness to Bruce Wayne. Um, what I like the most about Begins is it told that story, how Batman began. <laughs> you know, And Gotham, the TV series, is, is doing that at an even earlier age. But Batman Begins, and it had Liam Neeson. Who doesn't like Liam Neeson, right? Anything he does is gold. I mean, the Star Wars gimmick, okay, whatever. But when it got the realism of that for Batman Begins make, made sense. But then, of course, Nolan continued that. <laughs> See, still under the weather. Ear infections are gone, by the way. Dark Knight, to me, was too real. It was almost like... A Godfather movie, gangster. And I get the appeal to that, and it sold well, and I think it's still the highest grossing Batman there was. Heath Ledger had demons. He died of a drug overdose before the movie was released. That drew extra hype to that. Was that performance great as a villain, as a psychopathic killer villain? Yes. Top notch, Heath Ledger. But for my take on the Joker, it was my least favorite of motion picture. I'm sorry. I like my Joker cartoony and campy. So, therefore, Jack Nicholson, you're number one. Um, Cesar Romero is number one, but since that was just a TV show. Then you have Nicholson. Then I liked Jared Leto. I'm going to tell you why here in a minute. And then Heath Ledger. <coughs> I'm not going to get into any more details. I mean, this is really Virtue's brand of wrestling. But I just wanted to... To let you know, the reason why I, I actually prefer Jared Leto is his Joker over Heath Ledger's is because it complemented and it made a character in Suicide Squad. It wasn't supposed that movie was not about the Joker. It was about the Suicide Squad, and one of the main characters of the Suicide Squad was Harley Quinn. Everybody knows Harley Quinn is attached to the Joker, right? If you would have had a, you know, a performance by, and I'm not saying Leto did bad, but he did what he needed to do to make that Joker not outshine Harley Quinn. It was to compliment Harley Quinn in the Suicide Squad, and Quinn shined brightest, right? I mean, you can say Will Smith did a pretty good job as Deadshot, but Harley Quinn shine brightest is because Leto did the Joker how it was supposed to be done for that film, and that was a supporting role to get Harley Quinn over. We talk about that in wrestling all the time. 
So again, I'm going to go on record. I liked a lot Ledger's performance as a psychotic villain in any type of action movie. As the Joker, it was my least favorite because it just to me wasn't the Joker. It was like somebody out of the Godfather dressed up in Joker gear is like cosplay. Somebody psych, you know what I mean? Or or like Brad, um, uh, the Seven character, the killer where he was chopping Brad Pitt's wife. I think the who played that? Um, God, he's got a lot of heat in Hollywood right now. Um, gosh, and I, I'm having a mind blank. Um, I'll come back to it. But anyway, in Seven, the villain in Seven, to me, that's how Heath Ledger portrayed the Joker. And I'm sorry, it's my least favorite Joker on screen. <laughs> Nicholson, cartoony and campy, just like it was supposed to be. Ledger, great. But again, just I think it was a little bit too deep, too real. And maybe that's what made that that trilogy so great, to be honest with you. But I thought Leto did his job to, to compliment Harley Quinn and put her over. And if obviously if you saw Suicide Squad in the theater versus the um, full version on DVD and Blu-ray where it had the deleted scenes and they deleted a lot of Joker scenes, to me that even made it better. So again, Cesar Romero and Jack Nicholson are untouchable when it comes to the Joker. When it comes to voice acting, Mark Hamill – Although that Troy Baker guy who's been doing the recent video games, he does a hell of a job doing a Mark Hamill Joker impersonation. And it sounds legit. I'm still having a, a brain block here on my actor. Um, American Beauty. God, and maybe because he has heat in Hollywood right now. Um, and I have to look it up because, you know, you guys are going to call me nuts. And you're call me, call me out on it right now for having to look this up. Uh, at no DQ underscore virtue. I do not know why. Kevin Spacey. See, Kevin Spacey has all this heat in Hollywood, and it make it's like we're, we're supposed to forget who these people are and were, and I don't know. I mean, is it still innocent until proven guilty? I, I guess I you got to go with that. But the movie of the week is Wonder Woman. Gail Godot or Gadot, however you want to call her. Hot. Sexy. Let's be honest. Since the Bruce or uh, since the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy, the DC movies have really, really got a lot of heat. And nobody a lot of people hated Batman versus Superman. And to be honest with you, that hate carried over into Suicide Squad. And Justice League. But this got really good reviews. And maybe, is it because of the Me Too movement? You know, is that, or was this movie just really well done? I liked it. It was fantastic. And if this is the way they need to do the DC movies to get the mainstream people to like them and not crap on them, like Suicide Squad, Batman vs. Superman, and Justice League then by all means, let's do it. And I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that Aquaman that comes out in December this year, which happens to have William Defoe and Dolph Lundgren in it. Nice. Interesting. I like that. I hope that I, I don't expect it to get the praise that this did because it's going to have the heat carry over from Justice League. But I hope after, I hope after critics watch it that it may be – gets the high praise like Wonder Woman did, and then the fans carry over that like, and next thing you know, hey, we got another decent DC movie. Aquaman's not that bad. I know I'm going to like it either way. I like them all, right? Call me fanboy. But to me, right now, this is shining bright as the best DC movie since the trilogy um, of The Dark Knight, and I'm really hoping Aquaman surprises so I just wanted to get that out of the way. Now let's talk about wrestling and the one topic this week. And it was really, really bothering me. Becky Lynch. As you know, she was supposed to face Carmella one-on-one -on -one originally at SummerSlam for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Charlotte came back. They put Charlotte into the match. I predicted Charlotte was going to win. I just knew it. WWE's doing it. Roman's the universal champ. Charlotte, SmackDown Women's Champion. And Rousey is the Raw Women's Champion. That's just what WWE does. 
So with that said, I'm like, you know, the belts, they're just props. They're props. All this time, you know, Becky was a SmackDown women's champion earlier on uh, when they first <laughs> did the brand split. I don't know if she was one or two times, but nonetheless, she did have that title. Not very long, but she had it. It's not like she never had it. She never had the NXT title, women's title. And a lot of fans are jaded. Oh, well, we, we've been behind Becky. She's just such a natural baby face baby face and and she just deserves this she should have won the title that match well wwe's creative direction was to have her lose right charlotte pinder at SummerSlam, and then to have her her whore, my apologies to have her get a little bit of loser sore loser a little bit of you know remorse for being charlotte's friend and maybe not having a killer instinct See, so she snapped after the match and attacked Charlotte, which is a heel move because Charlotte's supposed to be liked. Well, the stupid smarks aren't liking Charlotte like the baby face because she's had the title and we, we want to see Becky pushed as the top girl. She's deserved it. She never got the chance in NXT because of the four horsewomen. She did win the SmackDown Women's Championship earlier on on the SmackDown Live when it first started. But it just it didn't last very long, and it's, she's just a natural baby face. She's so likable. Shut up. With this is getting freaking ridiculous. Shut the f up. If you like Becky Lynch, right, and you want to support her, it's clear as day that WWE wants her to be the villain. Okay, if you don't want to cheer Charlotte, that's fine. But to cheer Becky in spite of Charlotte, when now Becky's trying to come over as a villain, which is clear because of her promo on SmackDown, which she got really into. You know, again, she's delivering a, a heat, you know, supposed heated promo that's script. You can tell it's scripted. She did really good with that. I mean, imagine if she had no handcuffs and she got to kind of semi-shoot. Oh, it would have been awesome. But, you know, if people can boo Ciampa, the same people that like him, boo him in NXT because they know we're supposed to boo him, so we're going to help get him over his heel, well, then freaking boo Becky Lynch. If you like her so much, help get her over as a top villain. And if you have to cheer Charlotte... <laughs> If you have to, chair Charlotte and boo the hell out of Becky. So WWE has Becky beat Charlotte, and even if it's dirty, to get her that title, to get her more promo time, to get her more poses in front of the camera with that title belt, then do what you have to do, you smarks. I understand we all pay a ticket when we go to events, and we can like who we like and boo who we want. But if you are really truly behind somebody, you will boo them if they're a heel. Secretly cheer them. And you can cheer them at home, but if you're at the live event, boo them. You know what I mean? Like, could you imagine if Becky came out and all of her fans booed her to help get her over as a heel? You know how great that would make Becky feel? Because when you're a heel and you have a long heel run, a lot of times you can parlay that into becoming a baby face again. And when it would have been time, it would have been time. And Becky could have been a baby face. But now I see on the internet, everybody's saying she's a natural heel. Um, she delivered a forced heel promo and it just came across blah. And people just don't like Charlotte because WWE is pushing her like Roman Reigns. And again, I'm not really comparing Charlotte and Roman. But if the fans are going to boo Charlotte, who's supposed to be the top baby face now on SmackDown, then it's the same treatment, right? So whatever, you know, it, it's the truth. Now, are there times that I've cheered a heel? Yeah, I'm guilty of that. And I boot a baby face like Cena. I'm guilty of that. But when I've done those things, the majority of the crowd response, because I'm sitting there hearing it, my, what, what, if I booed a baby face, if I cheered a heel, I got stifled because the normal responses from the most of the people are happening correctly. So there are going to be people that do what I do. 
But <laughs> now it seems like everyone's on the social media initiative to let's all in unison hijack, you know, what WWE's trying to make us decide to, who to like and who not to like just so they'll change creative direction. CM Punk, thank you, bro. You wanted you, you're revolutionary. You're the one that's that kind of started this man. And maybe not you, maybe WWE for allowing the pipe bomb. And then it parlayed into Daniel Bryan. The, the crowd said, yes, yes, yes. We don't want to see Daniel Bryan in the Wyatts. He didn't win the Rumble. He should have. He went on WrestleMania 30, won the title, beat Triple H, then beat Orton and Batista. Now the fans are conditioned to think they can say what they want and creative. So that basically it's like if you're watching TV, we should just be able to. It's like those books. Remember those books when you were a kid that you'd read so far and then you can choose where to go? It's fine when it comes to that, but not you're saying that's how TV should be. You should be watching a television show and now all of a sudden hit a button to choose what part of the show it goes to in your favor and your liking. If you don't like it, just stop watching. The people that claim to have done that, and obviously people have done that, stopped watching because we've had a flat line of ratings. You know, they used to be a lot higher. Although, let's not forget, like I bring up every week, Social media numbers, 31 million YouTube subscribers, uh, 10 million or 20 million Twitter followers for WWE, whatever it is. Roman Reigns, that's 3.3 million Twitter followers. Uh, Facebook likes for WWE, what, 50 million, 30 million? It's ridiculous. Numbers are good there. TV ratings are flatline. So the people that just don't like the product anymore, they stopped watching, right? They also stopped talking about wrestling. They're gone. They, they don't talk about wrestling unless someone like me who does brings it up to them and forces them to talk. But the people that are still watching, they're watching for a reason. Well, A, we know they like to complain. So if WWE decided, no, we got to revert, we got to change course, this isn't working, and they made Becky baby face and Charlotte heel, in time, fans would shit on it. They'd end up saying, oh, no, Charlotte. Oh, no, we don't want to boo Charlotte. She's going to chase Ric Flair's record one day and pass Cena and Flair. And then, and then, you know, a couple months later, the fans, they'd change their mind and they wouldn't like what they're being, you know, oh, WWE's done this too long. Becky's been a baby face now for too long. Let's change her up. She needs to be a heel. <laughs> just remember, I just remember in the day, and maybe because I was young and naive as a kid, I'd watch the product and I would like, I'd like the villains back then. But for some reason, the way WWE did their stories, they made me like some of the baby faces because they were good at what they did. You know what I mean? I came into watching wrestling with my grandma in 1987, and I liked Piper heel. Um, he was heel WrestleMania one, two ish. I ve I was like five and six years old. I vaguely remember that Coconut Snuka, WrestleMania Orndorff, Mr. T, all that good stuff. But I remember Andre and Heenan. That's why I was drawn to Heenan. I liked the villains against Hogan. My grandma wanted Hogan to win. I wanted the bad guy. At some point, WWE tricked me. They got me, right? Because I started liking Ultimate Warrior. To me, he was the heel against Hulk Hogan, but he was the baby face. I liked Macho Man. Macho Man kind of went back and forth heel baby face. I liked him when he was the baby face. Bret Hart. So I, WWE conditioned me to end up liking baby faces. You know what I mean? So we do have that right as fans to cheer and boo who we want. But if you really, really, really want to support a wrestler, especially when you know they're on TV and the more you, the more heat, heat can be cheers or boos. It all depends on the angle you're looking at. The more heat, proper, proper heat you give to a wrestler that's trying to portray a certain character, superhero or villain, that's going to open up the management's eyes, Vince McMahon's eyes, everybody's eyes in the back, and say, hey, we're, we're on to something here. These fans are liking this. And then good things will happen to Becky. But I guarantee you if you continue to cheer her, boo Charlotte, then, it's, then WWE will go out of their way to make stale product for you, do the force fed to you, make it seem like they're trolling you, and you're just going to continue to be miserable. Because I think WWE's on to your game now, and they're like, well, we'll just keep trolling them because we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Our stock, we're doing okay. XF, I'm going to be able to try an XFL 2.0. We're doing okay. We're doing okay. 
pal, that's Vince McMahon. So what I'm going to continue to do is tweet and pro and a pro stance for heel Becky. When all those fans say she's a natural baby face, she should be doing the Daniel Bryan. Yes, yes, last, 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 because she's the Irish last kicker. I'm going to be against those fans. I'm going to be for how WWE is trying to push her because I want to see her get heat, get boos. Again, and if Charlotte doesn't get cheers, whatever. You don't have to like Charlotte. But if you really like Becky, like I see all these people say, then you will boo her because you know that will aid her in getting over as a heel, a top heel. She'll probably have a good title run. And down the road, you may be rewarded eventually with your baby face Becky run. Life is short. We all complain. But I think with online and social media, complaining is, see, I'm complaining about the complainer. That's my new thing. I've taken a huge step back of complaining about WWE. Creative sucks sometimes because I would like to see, like Becky, doing the heel promo, no handcuffs, Roman, no handcuffs. You know what I mean? A couple more swerves like Vince Russo did back in the day. Maybe put a dress on a guy or two like Vito. They don't, you know, they're very status quo. We don't get that exciting stuff to talk about as much. So I will always be critical of the creative, but I'm always now I'm just conditioned to support these wrestlers because one day when they're not in the big time anymore, some of them, it's easy to make big money on the Indies and outside of it. Some of them, it's not so much. And this is their livelihood. This is what they've trained to do and trained to be. And I'm going to tell you what. You, are, you like seeing the, the 20-minute wrestling matches with the false finishes. If you boo Becky and if you cheer Charlotte, you're going to get awesome freaking matches out of them for the SmackDown Women's Championship. <laughs> but if you continue to divert and boo Charlotte and, and cheer Becky when WWE clearly wants the roles opposite of what you think, that's when it's going to come across bad. These girls are... They're not going to phone it in, but I'm telling you, when they hear what the the reaction that they're trying to port from the character they're trying to portray, that makes I know this because I've talked to wrestlers. That makes them feel like a million bucks. It's performance art. You're getting your character over. But when Becky goes out and she's trying to get heat as a heel, and you're cheering her. And her mind, she's probably, you know, and, and some wrestlers are marks. They'll go and they'll probably think, oh, yeah, they're booking me wrong here in WWE. I'm going to quit. Neville, see you, Neville. Go have fun in New Japan. You know, you want your 30-minute wrestling matches? There you go. And I like Neville, but he, he left. He quit. And, I, and I'll say the same to CM Punk because he getting, didn't go on last at WrestleMania. You were still getting great matches. You were going to go over Triple H at a WrestleMania. So these – just come on, man. I You entertain me. I watch TV. I look at you as a television show and escape from reality, from my shoot job. I get to do these videos on a couple different websites, giving you my opinion. I've done a couple little small indie shows. I've been in locker rooms with some wrestlers who have been on TV, right? That's all – I mean, it, it's just it, it's just ridiculous that we have to – get so angry we have to get so angry and then the performers are the ones that suffer because we're not playing into what they're supposed to be delivering and management will get upset with them sometimes and you know like the Miz right we cheer the Miz because we know he's great at doing what he's doing but you could you imagine if we all booed booed the Miz and didn't give him any cheers but made the boos so loud He'd probably be considered maybe the greatest heel of all time, but because he still gets the cheers, because idiots want to cheer him, because we like the Miz. Yeah, and, and I, I think the internet has made fans too smart because back in the day, you'd pretty much cheer or boo based on how WWE conditioned you to, and that's what made the show. That's what made the show so great. The Macho Man and Elizabeth at the end of WrestleMania Seven. At the end of WrestleMania 7, when Warrior pinned, not, not at the end of 7 because Hogan and Slaughter ended it, but at the end of the match with Warrior and Macho Man, and Macho Man got pinned by Warrior and we had to retire, and Elizabeth and Macho reunited, and that led to that whole wedding angle. And, and he picked her up and held her, and he held the ropes for her this time. 
and there were women in the crowd crying, and you know there were guys that weren't crying but wanted to. Kids were – it was magic because people were playing along like they – and, you know, I say playing along like they're supposed to, and, and some people would say, well, that all happened organically back then. Did it, though? seemed like it was all written and staged how WWE and Vince McMahon wanted it. It played across – on TV like you wanted it, and the crowd reacted like they wanted. So don't say organically. Organically is you you watch a suit, you read a comic book, and you, you're, you're supposed to cheer for Superman, and you're supposed to root against Lex Luthor. And, and there are, you know, people like me who like the villains, but <laughs> when it comes to helping get getting talent over, when I'm in an event, I cheer Roman. I don't boom because it's cool. If I was at that SmackDown where Becky cut that promo, I would have booed because that would have helped get her over. And if I had to cheer Charlotte, even if I didn't like Charlotte, which I do, if I had to cheer Charlotte to help get Becky over more as a heel, that's what I do. When I was younger, dumber, you know, it was cool to cheer a heel Chris Jericho when he was out there, being Y2J when everyone else was booing when, when Jericho was a big heel. Was it cool to boo The Rock and Stone Cold when they were baby faces, John Cena? But I've changed. I've seen a little bit behind the curtain, and I know the performing, the, the how it how it's performing art. And basically, if they go out there and portray their character like the management wants them, and it gets over that way with the crowd, more money, more food on the table. Maybe you know you can retire a little bit younger because you're making more money. And you don't have to put your body through as much pain as you get older. I mean, look at these wrestlers. All the injuries they've sustained. You know about concussions. Look at Vito. Look at some of the wrestlers that have passed with drug, you know, suspected drugs, um, brain trauma. Right? It's physical business. It's stunt. It's it's like a stunt. Show. It's like stunt Broadway. Right? These guys are really and gals are taking bumps and getting hurt. So a lot of that and, and seeing wrestlers in locker rooms that go to little towns and, and, and do small 200 bucks for a show and they're hurting and they smell like Ben Gay or Asper cream. It's changed my vision on it and I respect it at a different level now. So if I get heat and you people think I'm doing it on purpose to draw a reaction, whatever. But that's it for this week's Virtues Brand of Wrestling. Becky Lynch. Let her become a top villain. It's time. I love it. I love it. This natural baby face bullshit, throw it away. Ditch it. Stop it. Idiots. Like Jericho would say, stupid idiots. But I am Virtue for BigVito.com and the Big Vito brand. You can follow me on Twitter at NoDQ underscore Virtue. I hope you enjoyed this polarizing topic today about the Jokers and about Becky Lynch. Moral of the story, boo the villains. Hey, it's Virtue here from BigVito.com and the Big Vito brand. And I wanted to let everybody know, if you, in case you already didn't, go to ProWrestlingTees.com and search Big Vito because you will see a spread of t-shirts that are must owned and you know what here is one is an example so i hope noel puts this on the end of some of my videos because it really makes me look like a big deal that i'm doing commercials for big vito's t-shirts on prowrestlingtees.com but seriously folks you know you want to represent the Pavarotti of hard shots to the body seriously no joke you want to get color with the Big Vito and the Big Vito brand? Head on over to PWT. Everybody knows it as ProWrestlingTees.com and search Big Vito and you will be able to choose your size. And you know what? I believe once in a while they run promotions and sales. So you always want to look out for that. But anyway, I am Virtue from BigVito.com and the Big Vito brand. Thank you for listening to me.